Hello guys and welcome back to yet another Galactic Craft tutorial. Uh, back in the tutorial world for Galactic Craft that we've been using over the past three episodes. Um, I just wanted to clear a couple of things up as well um, that I said I think in episode two about the oxygen collector. Turns out that it will take oxygen from fully grown wheat. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's fully grown, it just keep taking oxygen. I didn't realize that, but apparently so. And I've also been told it doesn't consume leaves. This may be a config option though, so just be wary about that when you do, because the wiki does say it will consume leaves and it won't take oxygen from fully grown wheat. Uh, but all the same, just be careful about that when you go up there and just test it out for yourselves and see what happens. Like I said, I've been testing it out on the server, uh, the Diamine mod source server that we play on, uh, if you've seen my let plays, and basically I've got a fully grown wheat farm and it's just collecting oxygen off of that and I have nothing to do with that now, uh, it just keeps running by itself. Uh, so just today uh, we're going to be covering a couple of things that you might want to build before you go up into space and a couple of very useful items that are definitely, definitely worth getting. I'm going to go through all of them. We're also going to go through like power storage, oxygen storage, uh, furnaces, um, these things here, <laughs> um, solar panels, decompressors, distribute bubble distributor, oxygen sealer, airlocks, uh, some decoration blocks, stuff like that. Uh, just things that are going to help you when you're up there. So first of all, we're going to start with the energy storage module. This can store up to 300, 312,500 redstone flux. Uh, max output of 187 RF per tick. This is really good. You can store your energy. Say you've got solar panels that are only running through the day. You can store your battery in this little power bank. And then it will drain out of there as well. So it will charge to the power bank rather than anything else. And then during the night time you can still run. However one of these is not enough as I found out if you've got quite a few machines lying about. But don't worry there is this energy storage cluster. This is basically an upgrade of this. And it will store you 1.5 million uh, RF. So it's a substantial amount. Almost five, about five times more than this one sorry it's definitely worth getting that one if you can afford it so we're going to quickly show you how to make these ones first of all uh, for your energy storage module you're going to need six compressed steel and uh, three of these batteries uh, the batteries are quite simple to make it's basically a piece of redstone and a piece of coal surrounded by compressed tin if you're not sure how to make compressed tin go back to episode one where i show you how to make all the compressed plates and you, to make the next one, the upgrade, you're obviously going to be needing a couple of these. Four in total to be specific. You're going to need one in each corner here. So you have to make four of these, which is going to cost you a total of 24 compressed steel and 12 batteries. It's not too hard to make them, so it's definitely worth doing it. And then obviously you're going to have to make an advanced wafer in a circuit, circuit fabricator, which again was shown in episode one. So if you're still not sure about that, go back and start from the beginning of the series and watch your way through. Uh, so you've got four of these, four compressed steel and an advanced wafer in the middle and that will make you one of these. And this has got plenty of space in it. You make a couple of these and make a little daisy chain out of them. So you have plenty of storage uh, depending on how many solar arrays you have. So just bear that in mind when you're trying to store power up on the moon or whatever. You're definitely going to want these because your solar panels are your best bet for power. Obviously, you can use your coal generator, but it's not the most effective. These solar panels here are absolutely awesome for it. Next thing will be your oxygen. Uh, obviously, you want to be able to store this somewhere. And here's an oxygen storage module. You can hold up to 660,000 uh, oxygen. has a max output of 20 thousand a second um this is also again quite useful if you have say like a bubble distributor which i'm going to show you in a minute you can basically store oxygen in this unfortunately there is no cluster upgrade for it at the minute hopefully there will be in the next release or one of the upcoming releases of 
um, galactic craft because there's a lot of stuff yet to be added so maybe we'll see something in the future with an upgraded version of this uh, but for now you've just got this and they're pretty simple to make again you need six compressed steel like so and three of these heavy oxygen tanks again i showed you in episode two how to make these but i'll show you again quickly it's three compressed steel three tin canisters three red wool just to make one of them uh, so you're going to need 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 compressed steel all together for that one. Uh, just to make one oxygen sealer. You don't really need more than one of them though. That I found out obviously once you start getting bigger places you're going to want more of them I assume. Uh, so moving on we've got the electric furnace. This is a galactic craft added furnace. Really really good. It runs off of power which is nice. It doesn't use coal. Very simple to make and it basically just does your job of a normal furnace but except it runs on power. We set the time to dawn. So like I said it's quite simple to make. You do a little um, upside down U shape here of compressed steel with a furnace in the middle. One advanced wafer on the bottom and two compressed aluminium on the bottom here. Like I said before anything you're unsure about go back. Uh, anything that I'm showing you how to use here is pretty much covered in any of the other tutorials. If it's not, I will mention so. Uh, so after this, you've also got another upgrade, which is the electric arc furnace. This thing is absolutely amazing. It doubles all of your ores. And you're definitely going to want this when you start getting into met meteoric iron. Because it will double this into ingots when you smelt it, which is absolutely fantastic. This one's a little bit trickier to make. And you do need meteoric iron in the beginning to make this one, which you're also going to have to go to the moon to get. Uh, so you can get this one to start off with. And once you get to the moon, upgrade to this one as soon as possible because it's so worthwhile. Uh, so these are going to take tier one heavy duty plates, which is what we use to make the rockets in episode three. Very simple things to make. Uh, it's basically just two compressed steel, two compressed aluminium, two compressed bronze, which will make you one of them plates. Um, so you're going to need five of them like that. You're also going to need your electric furnace because it is an upgrade. You're going to need one advanced wafer, again in episode one I showed you, and two meteoric iron ingots, which I will show you later on how to get. But basically, if you I'll explain it now quickly. Basically, if you go up to the moon and don't break walls, uh, you will find things that you'll find meteors that fall around you and basically you want to go mine them and it will give you one of these uh, raw meteoric iron you then smelt that into ingots uh, so this is very useful because it will double that and eventually and you're going to need a lot of them ingots eventually and it's very very grindy trying to get them uh, so now we sort of sorted out the optional power storage, oxygen storage, and a little bit of electronic furnacing, which is always really nice to see in a mod. Uh, it's very simple as well. It's literally just put your stuff in there or double it. Um, unfortunately, I can't find a way to pipe things through at the minute. It's the only downfall on it, but I don't know. Maybe there's a way that I just haven't found yet, uh, but I tend to use Ender IO a lot. So the next thing we're going to be moving on to are our solar panels. Like I said in the very first episode, there is other power. There are other power options than the coal furnace there, and it's your basic, oops, advanced solar panel there, and your basic solar panel here. Basically, this one will move in correlation to the sun. Uh, this one moves in correlation to the sun. This one will remain stationary upright, like so. This one will also generate 27 RF per tick on um, on the overworld. It does have different environmental boosts depending on what uh, planet or whereabout you are in the solar system. So you've also got this one here which is generating 18 RF per tick. This is still doing 27. Uh, so yeah, it's got a little bit of a difference and you can definitely tell it and this moves with the sun so it's definitely a lot more uh, convenient. That's generating 19. I think the higher the sun gets above this, the more it's going to collect. Whereas this one will remain a constant 27. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, these are both, again, pretty simple to make. Uh, you're just going to need a solar panel, two compressed steel, two aluminium wire, basic wafer, and a steel pole. This is for your basic solar panel. And to make the full solar panels, you want six single solar modules and three aluminium wire and to make the modules 
you want to be making blue wafers, glass across the top, aluminium wire here, and to make the blue wafers again, I think I showed you in the first episode, but just in case, you use your circ circuit fabricator like so, and then you just place all these items in so every single recipe you do, and then you just place your lapis up there, that will give you nine wafers. Uh, so that will give you plenty, that will give you... I believe it give you nine. Yeah, it does. So that will give you enough to do all six. Uh, fortunately, uh, so you're gonna need basically just one lot of this recipe for every panel that you do. Also, on a side note here, just to make these steel poles pretty simple, it's just compressed steel in a line down. So you get two of them. Uh, so moving on to the more advanced one, you're gonna need the exact same things pretty much. Uh, compressed steel on the sides. This one will take some heavy duty aluminium wire. It's basically just aluminium wire with aluminium on the bottom, wool on the top. It just basically makes it more insulated and a bit of a thicker cable. And then the only different other difference is you need an advanced wafer instead of the basic one. Uh, but these are definitely worth getting. I use them all over the place. They're fantastic. So moving on is the oxygen decompressor. So I showed you guys in episode two how to compress your oxygen into tanks to take up into space with you. This basically does the opposite, it will decompress any oxygen you have. So if you wanna transport oxygen in tanks, you can do so and then you're gonna to have to put it in here to decompress it and then you can funnel it out into oxygen storage or whatever you wanna do. Yeah, so yeah, 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 you can basically just fill up your oxygen thing using tanks if you want. If you don't have a setup there with oxygen collectors to collect oxygen for you, you can always use this method here and just compress tanks here on Earth. Probably use an ender chest or something similar like that to transport them through the dimensions. Once again, very simple to make four compressed steel, two compressed aluminium one oxygen fan and a concentrator with a bit of redstone torch underneath. I showed you these two in episode two, but here's a quick look if you don't remember them. And just quickly on that one, there you go. So that one's pretty simple to make. It basically decompresses any tanks that you want decompressed. And you can reuse it as oxygen. So the next one we have is the bubble distributor. This one is really, really cool. It basically makes a big dome bubble which has oxygen in it, in it and you can breathe and stuff in it. Uh, definitely recommend if when you're starting off. It's quite simple to make. It's just four of these, two of these, two of these, and one of these. Uh, oxygen vents, very simple to make. And again, the fans, very simple to make as well. So you shouldn't have too much of a problem doing that one. Moving on, we have the oxygen sealer. This will basically, if you pipe this into a room and you pipe oxygen out uh, through one of these blocks, say the sealable oxygen pipes, uh, you can basically, as long as the room is sealed everywhere and there's no escape to outside, it will basically seal the room of oxygen for you and it will stop you, it's disabled at the minute because this area is too big, uh, but it will basically seal the room and make sure there's oxygen in there so you can take your gear off while you're inside. Again, very simple to make. Two oxygen vents, one fan, four compressed aluminium, and two steel. Um, I haven't tested this one out yet, but Clip Addict does use it on our server, and it does look pretty cool, and it does the job. Uh, so moving on swiftly next is the airlock frames. You can make these on Earth without having to travel to the moon. Very simple, two compressed steel, six aluminium, and a concentrator. This will give you four frames. You think you need at least five in total, maybe slightly more. So make sure you do like this recipe two or three times just to make sure on that one. And then the last block, it's a multi-block structure, and this is your airlock controller. Uh, you need two compressed meteoric iron for this one. Uh, so you're going to have to go to the moon to get this, to get the controller and the airlock working. And if you go into it, it will sh show you, uh, basically it just takes one ingot to compress down into a plate on that one. So it's not too bad at all. Basic wafer, six compressed steel. Uh, this one also has a very interesting GUI. You can... Uh, configure your door, your airlock to how you want it. You can put it in horizontal mode, which will mean it will go in the floor. You can invert your selection. So opens on redstone signal. We can invert that so it will open without a redstone signal. 
that makes sense. Uh, you can also do player is in what, within one meter of the door or you can type a custom name in there. They got quite a bit of customizability in there. It's really, really cool. Obviously, you're going to have to power. I don't know if you have to power this or not. I'll find out when we get up into the moon and we actually build something like this. So the last two blocks I'm going to show you guys today. Just quickly going to get rid of these. Are the tin block and the tin decoration block. Uh, both tin decoration block. This one's just like a tiley one. Uh, but these are very simple to make. Very good blocks. You basically you take one piece of stone. One piece of compressed tin. And you'll get four decoration blocks. It's the exact same on this. Except it's to the side and not below. And that will give you really cool flooring. I've seen them in a couple of village, villages. And obviously because you get four for one block. And one compressed tin. It's definitely worth it. It's very nice material to build out of and it's very easy to get your hands on it and you're probably going to have an excess of tin anyway uh, but that's it that i'm going to show you guys for today so we've covered a couple of the essentials that you might want to look at taking up with you um in the next episode we're going to go up to the moon and we're going to cover a couple of things up there how to get settled and started and what kind of other vanilla equipment and stuff that you're going to want to be taking up with you just to settle down and survive and create yourself a livable moon base and then once we do that we'll show you the dungeons and stuff we can move on to mars and asteroids and show you the moon buggy all of this really really cool stuff that you can get in galactic craft it's an absolutely fantastic mod there's so much to cover in it and i cannot wait to for them to expand the mod even more Fingers crossed it happens soon because I'm absolutely in love with this mod. But thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys have found it useful. Like I've said before, any questions or queries that you may have about the mod, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my utmost best to help you. Um, but that has been it for me today, guys. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys have a very fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.